long-term problems such as hearing or vision loss, which may be partial or total, as well as seizures and problems with memory and concentration. Today, we are pleased to welcome to the program Dr. David Bratt, a practicing pediatrician for close to 50 years. Today's Vitaminets features folate. Folate is a natural form of vitamin B9, water-soluble and naturally found in many foods. It plays a key role in breaking down homocysteine, an amino acid that can exert harmful effects in the body if it is present in high amounts. Folate is also needed to produce healthy red blood cells and is critical during periods of rapid growth, such as during pregnancy and fetal development. Good sources of folate include dark green leafy vegetables, such as turnip greens, spinach, romaine lettuce, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, and broccoli, beans, peanuts, sunflower seeds, fresh fruits, fruit juices, whole grains, liver, seafood, eggs, and fortified foods and supplements. And that was today's Vitaminates. Zone, your reliable, authentic supplier has just gotten better. You can now visit our website www.fanzonett.com for your authentic wear and collectibles. The only place where you can use both your Visa debit and credit cards. Visit our website fanzonett.com to make your purchase today. What's the best way to grab the attention of viewers? Please exercise more patience. You have to be kidding me. Doing what we do best. I'll say at the very least it's a conspiracy of laziness against the people. Join me, Keaton Shaw. And me, Sean Michael Small, for Talking Point. Weekdays from 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. We go in-depth on the trending issues and engage the most controversial newsmakers as we get them to account to the people for their actions. You can't go to the government with nothing. You can't go to cabinet yeah. with an with a, with a empty hand, with a wish. I'm mm -hmm. glad that we're having this a sober, mature discussion. In the present situation, I expect a continuation of the chaos. Join, Join us, us for, for the, the discussion, discussion, Mondays to Fridays, only on WESN, the content capital. So tell us, Dr. Brad, mm -hmm. what exactly is meningitis? So meningitis is a very serious illness of basically of children, although adults can get it. And um, it's an inflammation of the meninges, um, which is like a very fine, thin plastic. It actually has three layers, but we'll forget about that, mm -hmm. which surrounds the brain and encompasses the brain and sort of keeps it um, in its physical shape, as well as assisting, offering assistance to it, to the arteries and so on. And it has a predilection to get infected by germs. How will germs even get into the brain through the skull? How yes. is that possible? It, through the blood, because of course the blood part of, in your body goes everywhere. Right. So if you have, for example, let's say a common scenario is you have an, a bad cold mm -hmm. and your, um, the tubes that drain the middle air. The middle air is part of your nose. A lot of people don't understand this. So it secretes fluid. And if the cold blocks up, the middle air, the drainage of the middle air, the fluid accumulates there. Anytime fluid eliminates, fluid stagnates, anywhere it tends to get infected. Correct. Same thing with the middle air, it gets infected with bacteria and those bacteria then travel in the bloodstream. Usually, sometimes it can, it can through a local process, get into the brain too. And it infects the, this membrane that surrounds the brain, which sort of protects the brain too. 
okay. and it causes serious illness. Eh? These, if you have meningitis, you're very sick, that's hospital. But not right? everybody gets meningitis after no. a cold, so no. who's predisposed to getting something yeah, like well, that? Well, in children, we're really not too sure what the reasons are. We always talk about whether they have an immune deficiency of some sort mm -hmm. against that particular um, um, germ, uh, or is there some defect in the meninges itself that or is there is there something wrong with the bone structure surrounding the brain which allows bacteria to get most of the time most of the time we don't know we really don't know and most children who have meningitis and recover from meningitis um, don't get meningitis a second time mm -hmm. um, unless again like I said there's some defect of the central nervous system which predisposes them the, the, the back the vertebrae and the back don't close off properly, and that leaves a hole, and that gets you get that's that's a totally different right. thing. But normal, healthy children, if they're not immunized, can get meningitis. Right. So it would be really the kids who have kind of fallen off on their vaccination right schedule. Right now, those mm -hmm. are the kids who will get meningitis. Right. And they are very few, fortunately, in Trinidad and Tobago. We have a very good, very solid immunization program as far as meningitis is concerned. Right. So that the, uh, I, I, I don't think they are seeing very many cases of meningitis in, the, in, our public, in our hospital because, of course, these cases don't end up in private nursing homes. Private nursing homes can't take care of children who are seriously ill. You have yeah. to go to the, people need to know this, you have to go to the public hospital, whether it's Mount Hope or San I'm Fernando glad you said or, that. or um, San Grande. So let's talk first of signs and the symptoms of meningitis. What would that look like? Yeah. Um, first of, let's say a baby. Mm -hmm. So sick, mm -hmm. um, so that they, they're going to develop fever. Right. And they're going to develop this is serious fever. This is not your little, I think the child feeling warm. Not responding kind of to Panadol at not all. Not responding to yeah. Panadol. The child is lethargic. The child is not drinking. The child is not eating. The child probably is going to be vomiting. Mm -hmm. uh, the child is going to look very, child may be breathing heavily. Real Ill. sick, real sick child. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, then, it's sort of difficult because it may start or just as a a child who is not too well, the baby is irritable. not eating as that much, a little peevish. Yes. And then it gets irritable for me, is more serious than peevish. And then the next thing, you know, you have a child who may even be convulsing. And then that's... Having a seizure. Having a seizure, yes. Stiffening, Stiffening up and then relaxing. jerking. Yes. Yeah, right. unconscious. And that's all I think. If it, once it gets to that, that baby is serious. So you really have to stop it before. So the mums out there were looking on. Yeah. What would be, we want to pick it up early, yeah. if it's happening, yeah. what would be that telltale sign for the moms to know, all right, hospital, yeah. this is serious. Yeah. Baby not eating. Mm. Baby not eating, but baby, that's what babies do, don't yeah. they? Correct. They eat, they sleep, and so on and so forth, they smile. Baby stops smiling, important sign, baby not eating, baby lying down there too quietly. Yes. And that's a serious thing because I've seen babies brought into a hospital and the parents say the baby's sleeping, but the baby's sleeping too much. No, something's wrong. Those are the signs. No. Good. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's difficult for a mother, especially a young mother. So the thing is, if you're not sure, go. Take the baby, have somebody tell you, no, this baby doesn't, it's not serious. It doesn't have meningitis, it doesn't have pneumonia, right. it's not dehydrated. But because in the beginning, children, in the first 24 hours, children may be sick. They may be going to get very sick. But they don't look very sick. They're not behaving that bad. They're a little bit quiet and so on. And then it starts to progress. Mm -hmm. And a word of caution, the disease that progresses at night and you're scared at night yeah. and you think something is wrong with your baby, take the baby to the hospital. That's right. Take the baby to it's the hospital. too many times you see parents, they go, well, we'll yeah. wait, until, we'll the wait until the morning. No, yeah. don't wait until the morning. Yeah, yeah. The concern, the baby's not looking well, the baby's vomiting and not drinking, you can't get the fever down, take the baby to the hospital. Because things happen very quickly with kids. Very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, very quickly. They, they get sick very quickly and they get better very quickly. Yeah. So, it, things so once they're quickly. refusing food, food and water, yeah. that's a problem. Yes. Fever, not responding, lethargic, not smiling. Not smiling. Yeah. yeah, those are all important signs. So don't hesitate to yeah. pick up the phone to call. Yes. Just go straight go to straight, casualty. Go straight to you casualty. have to be a public hospital, not, yeah. not your GP. If you, if no, if you go to your GP or you go to one of the private nursing homes, they're going to send you 
and to the public me. hospital. And time and is of the essence. Child, they're going to send you there right away. And what should they expect when they get to casualty? Um, they're going to have to go through a lot of tests. They're going to see their baby yeah. going through some Yes. Some so, poking. Well, the first thing that is that the baby should be attended to as, as rapidly as possible. Yeah. So you have to tell whoever sees the baby the first time, my baby is really sick. I don't like the way my baby is looking, but I need you all to see the baby right away. Yeah. And then you're going to have, they're going to take the baby away from you. If the baby is really sick, they have to take the baby away from you. You may not be able to see the baby for a while while they take blood, put up a drip. And in the case of meningitis, they're going to do a lumbar puncture, which Tell means us, putting yes. a needle into the back of the baby to obtain some of the um, fluid from the brain. That bathes the meninges. That bathes the meninges right. to see if there's infection in it. Yeah. And once there's infection in it, once they see that, and sometimes when you do this, the fluid comes out and you can see it's pussy fluid. Yeah. Yeah, and once you see that, your drip is up, you give the first dose of, um, of antibiotics. antibiotics. Which, uh, and that first of antibiotics is crucial because that is what really starts killing the bacteria yeah. and prevents the infection from progressing into the substance of the brain itself Correct. and then damaging the substance of the brain. And now you end up with a child with damage to the brain who has a big head or who is paralyzed or who can't hear or who can't see and then those are those are some of the Correct. serious complications of a child with meningitis. So it's important I think um, that the parents are aware that the tests that have to be done yes. are absolutely essential. Yes, yes. They are a bit they are invasive. invasive. Yes. You know as you said the lumbar puncture yes. it's not um, I mean, yes, we do allow parents absolutely. to see, but yes. it's not for the faint of heart, but it's so absolutely necessary yes. because not only are we going to diagnose, yeah. we're going to actually be able to know which bug is in there is and what antibiotic is, is and sensitive yes. to that bug. Yes. So in we the, know exactly the, yes. what to, to In the use. beginning, you give the most common, you assume it's the most common anti, um, bug, bug and you give the most common yeah. antibiotic, which covers a lot of bacteria because it's... What we're concerned about really is bacterial meningitis. You yes. can also have viral meningitis, but that is much that more common, but much, much, Shut much off. less yeah. um, dangerous. You yeah. know? So, so that's that you need to do that lumbar puncture. Do all the kids have um, to do a CT scan? Not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. Um, it, 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 it would depend on how sick the child came in. It would depend on how sick the child looks after 24 hours, whether you decide to do um, something more, more extensive. Right. Yeah. So the child will normally be in the hospital, if diagnosed, yes. and would be in the hospital. 10 days, 10 to 14 days. Yeah, on yeah. IV, 10 drips, days IV drips, as well as yes. antibiotics. Yes. Um, worst case scenario, mm -hmm. there are complications that may occur yeah. if... Um, the child is not brought in a timely fashion, and so the treatment is delayed. Yes. Or child, let's just talk about that scenario first off. Delayed treatment, you will have complications. Yes. What are the complications of meningitis? Well, the most common one is hearing loss. Yeah. Um, that's almost, if it's delayed and serious, that almost certainly is going to happen. So after the treatment, you're going to have to have this child's hearing evaluated because it's nerve, it affects the nerves yeah. of the, um, the, the hearing nerve. Um, that's, that, that's, that, that's a common one. Um, another one maybe that the child may um, have some degree of um, paralysis of, of a limb. So yeah. being able to move a hand or being able to walk well. So that's, 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 that's a serious one. Um, and actually anything that you can think of that the brain does well, um, it can affect the yeah. brain. So things may not turn up for years until the child starts going to school and then you realize the child has a problem a little in slower. learning. A little slower, yeah. um, a little more clumsy. Um, coordination subtle, subtle coordination, is off. Things, things like that. Yeah. A little not as um, um, be emotionally stable, a little unstable emotionally, all of that. All of those no, things, are, things are the possibility. Really? Okay. Yes, um, depending on what part of the brain ends up being affected by, by the in, infection due to delayed diagnosis and delayed treatment. So should so, all, the, all kids who've been the diagnosed, treated for meningitis, all of them get auditory testing? They should. Testing for their hearing? And they should get followed up for years for their until milestones. they're in school and you're doing good in school and then you can really relax. Up to what age? Like what we're talking about high school? Yes, until, yeah. until they're 11. Yeah. Till the 11. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 
And even so, after that age, there may be some problems. We don't need, we don't see much meningitis anymore because we have a good immunization program, which started in the, as far as meningitis is concerned, it started yes. in the 90s. Yeah. Um, and it has continued well. It's routine. All of the children receive their, so we are talking about causes of meningitis. So okay. basically it's either viral or bacterial. And what's either The viral bacteria? are not too important. Okay. The viral, they, it, it's very common. Mumps gives you, and measles and stuff like and that. And we already you. have that and on the schedule. We have that on the schedule. So it's, the, it's three bacteria mm -hmm. that cause bacterial meningitis. One is Haemophilus influenza, type B, right. um, which is a nasty little character that causes a lot of illness. It causes air infections. It used to cause something called epiglottitis, which okay. used to cause children to suffocate to death. Yeah. It causes pneumonia, and it also causes meningitis. And of course, it's called a type B. So it's called H, Haemophilus I, Influenza B. It's called, the, the vaccine is called HIP. The HIP vaccine is routine in Trinidad and Tobago. All babies Everybody get it. Everybody gets it. Two months, four months, six months, 18 months, five years. Right. It's routine. Uh, you're, not, you're supposed to be not allowed to go into school unless you have at least three. Uh, but that's another story about children who go into school and they aren't immunized. So that's the first one. The second bacteria that causes meningitis is the pneumococcus. Yes. The pneumococcus, which causes pneumonia especially, but it also causes pneumococcal meningitis. Maybe about 10% of the cases we used to see right. was pneumococcal. Uh, so there's a vaccine for that, and that's either the syn synflorex, is it synflorex? I forget. The one we're using now in Trinidad is the Prevnar 13, yes. which we've been using for years. And that's every that's kid in the health centers. In the health centers. We, we're offering oh, yeah. it. You get it free. Okay. You can just go in and get it on the nurses. We'll gladly get it. They're happy to give it to you, too. The third bacteria that causes is meningococcal, the bacteria called meningococcal, which fortunately we don't have in Trinidad as much as other countries do, mm -hmm. so we don't give it routinely. A lot of um, uh, students, however, who want to go away to study, the, and especially if they're going to be sleeping in the dorms, dorms yes. yes, they have to take them, they have to get the meningococcal Let's vaccine. talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. So, okay, my kids, they're getting ready to go to university. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if they have, they would have been vaccinated for that. What do I do? It's available in the health centers. Yeah. It's available privately. So, so all you need, if most of the university requested? forms, the college forms, right. I'm not sure about Yuri. I don't think Yuri need no Yuri doesn't mm -mm. request it, no. no. But if you're going away, there is a form to fill out. And one of the things they will ask you, if your child is going into the dorm, then he needs you have to give us, so you have sure, to tell us sir. you don't want it, otherwise he won't be allowed in the dorm. Yeah. Because otherwise we want the child to have it. And that is usually given when they're about 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. Yeah. From your experience the significance and the importance of vaccinating mm. the, our babies yeah. before they get into school. Yeah. Um, talk to us a little bit yeah, well, about it, that, especially yeah. when it comes to something that's so preventable, like meningitis. Yes, yes. It, it's, we have a good program and we have been able to control. When I started at um, Port of Spain Hospital in 1977 with Dr. Webb and Dr. Cameron, and Dr. Ramke soon was there, and Dr. Dial was there. Wow. Um, all the old stages <laughs> were there. Um, we would have meningitis cases and cases of epiglottitis on Ward 43 and 44. And in South, Dr. Isaac Mohammed, Reggie Cox, who were the two pediatricians there. Yeah. Talking about the original pediatricians there, yeah? those, those, those four people, Dr. Ramke soon, Dr. McDowell in, up north, mm -hmm. Dr. Mohammed and Dr. Cox in South, they saw meningitis all the time. They always had one or two cases of meningitis on the ward. Yes. And we lived through the introduction of the vaccine in Trinidad in the 90s. So I'm talking about we would have experienced almost 20 years of seeing children with meningitis and their complications on the ward. Vaccine introduced, and in 10 years' time, Numbers. we've not seen, vac we've not seen meningitis Brilliant. anymore. Brilliant. And I mean, we need to continue. We need with to continue that, that yeah. because the, the bacteria is still out there. People don't seem to don't understand this. The bacteria yeah. doesn't disappear. It's Correct. there. Yeah. It's just waiting to find somebody who is not defended by the by the vaccine. That's and right. this vaccine is by the way, this vaccine is safe. This vaccine is not like COVID where you have all kind of 
pro people think this and that and the other. It was well tested. It's well tested, well tested in yeah. thousands of children yeah. over a series of years before it was allowed into the community. And it's has shown itself to be so effective and safe over so many years. So it's, 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 it's something I think most people accept and do without even knowing what it is the Correct. child is getting, just to know the child is being yeah. and it's, protected. So stick with your schedule. Yes. Um, again, look at the, if, you, if your child has a fever, observe it. Yes. If the fever is not coming down with Panadol yes. and with cooling your baby. And you, you find the child is getting worse, more lethargic, yes. more, more quiet, less eating. Yes. Uh, alarm bells, red alarm flags, bell. yes. pick up, doesn't That's matter it. what time, go to That's the hospital. That's right. uh, a hospital, public yes, hospital, yes. be preferable, yes. casualty, yes. alert the nurse in attendance. Yes. My baby is really not looking well. Yes. This is not my normal yes, baby. Yeah, exactly. Those are not, important words. Yes. This is not my normal baby. The nurse may, well, you know, all mothers coming and think their little baby is very sick. Yeah. But somebody needs to look at that baby immediately, triage the baby and say, look, this baby looking a little too sick for me. Enter doctor. If you had to leave the audience with one golden nugget on meningitis and probably even vaccination as a whole, yeah. what would you say? Yeah, that vaccination program in Trinidad and Tobago is one of the best public health um, things that we are doing. Lots of things in public health we're not doing, but yeah. vaccination, the public health nurses, the ladies in in brown, the ladies in brown, brown. I think I remember yeah. Dr. Lennox Jordan used to call them, call them that. The ladies in brown know what they're doing and they're good at what they're doing and we really should salute them. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bratt. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>